The White House is also now addressing the Texas governor's calls to shut down a shelter for migrant children in San Antonio. There were complaints that were filed with state agencies, and those complaints articulated very specific allegations about sexual assault on minors at this Freeman Center. Currently, we have no basis for his call to shut down the uh, Freeman, the San Antonio Freeman Coliseum as an intake site, but we will, of course, we take these, uh, this, uh, these allegations seriously, and they will be investigated. The feds are now spending $60 million a week to shelter migrant children, according to the Washington Post. But talking about his new budget, the president didn't mention the border or immigration. He did talk about another threat, though. It makes major investments in the fight against climate change. The White House's coordinator for the southwest border is on her way out. Ambassador Roberta Jacobson now says her plan was always going to be to leave after the first 100 days. And officials here are saying the Vice President Kamala Harris will continue overseeing a whole-of-government approach to dealing with immigration, which is different than what they had been saying, that she was just in charge of diplomacy with Central American countries, and that's why she hasn't been to the border yet. John. Well, Ambassador Jacobson's tenure didn't last long. Peter Ducey for us at the White House tonight. Peter, thank you. Tonight, a behind the scenes view of the humanitarian crisis along our southern border. Fox News gets an exclusive ride along with the National Border Patrol Council and a delegation led by House Republican Whip Steve Scalise to see the challenges border agents are facing. Correspondent Alex Hogan has the story for us tonight from Mission, Texas. Footsteps in the dark, the last leg of a trip migrants hope will lead to a new life. They'll cross, you know, hundreds and hundreds through here. Fox News on an exclusive ride along with Border Patrol joining a congressional delegation. Our guide, Agent Chris Cabrera, says in 20 years he's never seen this many crossings. I mean, when February ended, we thought, wow, that, that was rough. Um, March out did it by, by, by a long shot. In March, 172,000 migrants made the journey, one not without violence or injury on the road. From not too far from here, we found a, a young boy that, that died of exposure uh, from heat exhaustion, eight years old. Planning for the worst, according to agents, some girls bring the morning after pill. Many of these young girls that are coming across are being sexually assaulted and raped. House Republican Whip Steve Scalise leads the delegation's visit, calling on President Biden to reinstate one specific Trump immigration policy. The single biggest thing that the president could do today is reverse the order that he did repeal in the Remain in Mexico policy. Just hours later, by daybreak, a second tour, this time on the water, armed boats racing along the Rio Grande River, the real border between our neighboring nations. Anywhere that's got a, a clear path for them to get up and get off the riverbank. President Biden needs to come down and see this himself. Back in the brush, off the water, it's group after group finding their way. Agents use night vision goggles and thermal imaging, knowing others are watching back with the same high-end military-grade equipment. Hey, the cartels control who crosses where and when. 19,000 kids crossed the border alone in March, some arriving with nothing more in hand than a blanket. These siblings crossed the border all alone, so exhausted agents had to carry them the final stretch. John, unaccompanied minors continue to arrive. In the darkness, we saw groups dart off the road, only coming out when they realized we wouldn't harm them, showing the reality of many of the interactions on this journey. And while they made it, most won't be able to stay. John? Exclusive reporting from our Alex Hogan in Mission, Texas tonight. Alex, thanks so much.